In the last few years, there have been several announcements suggesting a potential discovery of the closest black hole to the solar system. You can find previous videos about this in the description, but in essence, it became one of the major challenges for modern astronomy. An attempt to discover a black hole by using modern observations and modern techniques, and by knowing what we know about these unusual objects. And in this case, we're of course talking about smaller, stellar mass black holes that are usually produced by massive stars going supernova, with the average mass of approximately 10 solar masses. We're obviously not talking about giant black holes like the ones in the center of the galaxy. And pretty much every major black hole discovered in the Milky Way galaxy has actually been only found because of its partner. Usually, by absorbing the mass from the partner, a black hole becomes what's known as the X-ray binary. It produces super powerful emissions visible in the X-rays and very often other frequencies as well, with all of this visible from thousands of light years away. But all of these X-ray binaries are relatively far away, thousands of light years away from planet Earth. And they're also not particularly numerous, compared to the number of black holes we expect in the Milky Way. Our galaxy is expected to hide at least 100 million different black holes because of previous supernova, and only a handful has been discovered so far. But a lot of newer studies try to focus on discovering them by using something else. In this case, either gravitational lensing effects when they pass in front of a star, or by seeing various gravitational anomalies from a star that might be nearby that could be changing its orbit in a somewhat unusual manner. And well, relatively recently, we've discussed one of these discoveries coming from the Gaia telescope. A discovery of potentially the nearest black hole to us, the black hole known as Gaia BH1, the first such black hole confirmed by the Gaia telescope, located about 1600 light years away. But now we have a new study that seems to present evidence for something possibly much, much closer. Actually, 10 times closer, 153 light years away. But the evidence in this case is more statistical and not necessarily of the actual observation. So, hello, wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss this new discovery and a new announcement in regards to the potentially closest black hole to planet Earth, or maybe even two, once again discovered using Gaia data, but in this case looking at something slightly different. Looking at this. This is the Hyades cluster. One of the most well-known star clusters, located in the constellation of Taurus, at a distance of just over 150 light years away from planet Earth. But in this case, this is not a globular cluster, it's what's known as an open cluster. A location of active star formation, where many different stars were formed as a result of a molecular cloud, forming various overdensities, collapsing into various stars, representing a somewhat spherical group of several hundred stars all of them of relatively similar age, similar chemical parameters, and even similar motion across the space. But unlike globular clusters that exist for billions of years, open clusters do not. They actually fall apart, losing mass every few million years. And so normally, after about a billion years, most of them dissolve completely, which is very likely how the solar system began as well, in some kind of an open cluster that existed 4.6 billion years ago. Although there are definitely exceptions, there's a tiny fraction of these clusters that survive for billions of years with the stars permanently locked in a dance around one another. A few of these have been discovered in the last few years. But when it comes to this Hyades cluster, it's somewhere in the middle. It's approximately 625 million years old and it definitely already lost a lot of mass, with many stars dispersing across the galaxy. In terms of size, it's about 33 light years across but it does actually have a much denser core that's about 8.8 .8 light years across, representing most of the mass and most of the tightly bound stars. Interestingly enough, today, most of the stars here are relatively small. Anything over 2.3 solar masses has already actually changed into either white dwarf or when supernova, creating a neutron star or a black hole. But the majority of stars here are much smaller in size and in mass, typical red dwarfs or K-type stars. But because this is also the most studied cluster, in the last few years scientists discovered at least 8 confirmed white dwarfs, naturally suggesting that many bigger stars and more massive stars left their remnants in the middle. And that of course implies that there should be, technically, black holes in here as well. Black holes that were left behind by some of the most massive stars that very likely existed here over 400 million years ago. 
And since modern observations are so extremely accurate, finding these black holes has become kind of possible. It's even become possible to find planets here, with one already confirmed around a star known as Epsilon Tauri. And so by focusing on motions of stars in this cluster, the researchers behind this paper performed various computer simulations in order to compare the results from simulations to physical observations from the Gaia telescope. And the focus on this case was on actual positions and velocities of stars inside the Hyades cluster, which because of Gaia telescope have been measured with extreme precision in the last few years. For example, here's what the motion of these stars looks like according to Gaia telescope. And when the results were compared, the positions and the velocities did not necessarily match up. But they did match very well once you introduce at least two to maybe three black holes of the stellar mass type, basically the ones similar to Gaia BH1. And so in other words, by trying to simulate the results and compare them to the physical observations, they realized that there may be something hidden inside of this cluster, changing the orbits of stars overall. And the best match was if there were two or maybe even three stellar mass black holes right in the center of the cluster. Which of course should not come as a surprise, because white dwarfs have already been discovered here as well. But unlike white dwarfs, black holes are obviously invisible. And naturally, if confirmed and if this is correct, this would be the closest black holes discovered so far, and possibly even some of the closest black holes in general. It would be extremely difficult to find anything closer, and within about 150 light years away from us, no binary systems are known to us potentially hosting something massive and invisible. And so the black holes inside this cluster could definitely be the closest. But exactly where they are, or even if they are here, is really not a question we can answer anytime soon, because at the moment there's just no way to confirm them, unless somehow one of them makes itself known, either by suddenly absorbing a lot of mass and emitting a lot of X-rays, or by passing in front of one of the stars and producing gravitational landing effects. These types of effects can be observed by some of the future telescopes like the Nancy Grace Roman telescope, but it's not possible just yet. And so until these future discoveries, at least for now this is definitely a pretty strong contender for the location with the closest black holes to planet Earth. And if it's confirmed or maybe disproven, I'll make sure to follow this up with the next video. Until then, check out some of the similar videos in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.